TitleMatchNetwork.com. Did you ever get an offer to leave at all by Vince? Uh, not by Vince, by my partner and by Gene Okerlund and a couple other people. And I said, I said, how could I walk out of my father? Right. I mean, are you kidding me? I told my dad um, way back, and I think this, this one hurt more, and I've never shared it with too many people. And I probably shouldn't share it here. We were standing outside the office, and I said, Dad, you and Mom can live the rest of your life comfortably. Why don't we just close her down? And he said, you're a quitter. And I said, I'm not a quitter, but I know that we can't compete with him with the money he's got behind him. We can't do it. It's just you and I. So I said, okay, I'll stay till the end. And then we had put together a great big deal with WGN. We had worked four years on it, spent all our money on it. Um, they were gonna put us on all the tribute stations. WPIX, uh, KTLA in LA, the one in New Orleans, the one in Atlanta and Chicago, WGN. And we were gonna, they were gonna be our partners and they also had a piece, of, they uh, had, um, it was the pay-per-view on at that time, um, was the name of the company. Mm. And now they owned it. So we were bringing Hogan in. We'd worked four years on this. We turned out, we had ESPN paid us to be on the program. That's what kept us going. Right. They said, give us all the commercial time on ESPN. So we pulled all the spots, gave it to WGN. There a guy had it. Went to New York. Hogan was going to sign with us. He was going to sign a $6 million contract with us, with, with WGN. And the day we got there to go in for the meeting, they said, our newspapers went on strike. We don't know how long they're going to be out. We can't do the deal now. Now we've lost all our commercial time with ESP and we have nothing. We were done. That is the true, real story of what went down. Uh, I appreciate No matter that. whatever else you hear from anybody, I was there with both Vince, Vern, and when the whole thing went down and that's the way it went down. Any regrets around that period of time? Pardon me? Have any regrets? Over uh, any my only regret was I wish I could have gone up to the WWE. I, because it cost, it cost me dearly, uh, my family. I put them in a real tough situation because, you know, used up everything we had saved and yeah. condominiums I had in Florida that I sold to keep to keep us going. Put them in a real bad financial situation, which, you know. There's been a lot of talk, you know, why AWA officially shut down. The WWE put out the documentary on the promotion, and Bischoff actually had both said it was it was it wasn't the competition of the WWF, but really the legal battles that Vern trying to fight off uh, the eminent dom domain acquisition of some of the land that he owned by the government that finally killed the company. Well, that, and uh, you know, he'd end up putting a lot of these wrestlers on contracts, paying them the money that they they weren't they weren't producing. Uh, the biggest thing is what I told you when when we took all our 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 spots on ESPN and gave them to WGN. I mean, right then, that shut us down. How did your father uh, take the end of the company, and how did you take it? Oh, it was tough on both of us. Man, it about killed him. You know, he had that going, plus this eminent domain. He had 58 acres out on Lake Minnetonka, which is a, a suburb of Minneapolis, and uh, that piece of property is probably worth two, $300 million right now. And they took it from him. They eminent domain, he fought it for seven years, paid off a couple of different attorneys. Uh, they put him in a place that uh, my mom went downhill. I mean, the battle took a toll on both of them. That isn't what put him out of business. That was his, you know, that was his 401k plan was that land. You know, selling off a lot every year or two. Uh, what put him out was when we pulled the spots from ESPN. Well, you did make money off the sale to WWE. I was going to ask you uh, yeah. how that came about between uh, WWE and your, and your family to sell the rights to the library. We, we started um, the AWA Classics, uh, Stan Hubbard, Hubbard's own KSTP station in Minneapolis. Okay, They were the first ones to put the satellite in the air. They sold the satellite to DirecTV for $2 billion. Before they sold it, Stan Jr. came to us and he said, why don't we do a pay-per-view? We'll promote it nationally for you in all our markets. 
So they did. We did a pay-per-view on DirecTV, the first one besides McMahon doing it on there, and it did some really good numbers. So they wanted to keep us on. We did a show once a month for them. We did 30, 32 shows, I think, 30 or 32. And uh, we were getting paid every month from it. McMahon went to DirecTV. This is the story I got from my brother-in-law who worked with DirecTV and Todd Okerlund. McMahon went to them, was trying to negotiate a better deal for them, and they said, Vince, we don't need you, we've got wrestling. Hmm. That's what turned him to, to coming. How did your family feel about selling the material? Well, we had partners. We had Todd Okerlund, uh, Bob Grazinger, Joe Kupik, my dad and I. And my sisters weren't in on it. And uh, so they, they felt they got kind of taken by the whole deal. But it was a business deal that we made with them on the pay-per-views that had nothing to do. You know, business was business. But. Right. What did you think of the uh, AWA documentary they produced on you? You know, I didn't see the whole thing. I've only seen, seen bits and pieces of it. It's um, too hard to watch or you, don't, you were there, you lived it? Yeah. You know, and well... When I started watching, some of, the, some of the things some of the guys said were, were not accurate. Right. But, you know, because it was lean more with McMahon's people on there, and they were all leaning it all towards Vince. I mean, they're not going to cost them their jobs. Uh, I think that's the reason why I didn't... I mean, it was, it was, it was good, but it could have been a lot better if everybody would have said how they really felt and what really happened. What I'm telling you right now is what really happened and how everything really went down. And there was only three of us that knew, McMahon, Vern, and Greg. Hmm. 